Today, we are going to cover special quadrilaterals and then go into some vocabulary with circles. So, let's begin. The first quadrilateral I would like to start with is a trapezoid. A trapezoid, the definition we want to use, is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. You'll notice that my definition is very short, and I want to make it as short and concise as possible because those are the required markings I'm going to have you do on all of your drawings. I have drawn three quadrilaterals, and none of which are a trapezoid yet. Don't fall into that trap. We need one pair of parallel sides, so I need to mark my parallel sides as such. Now I have a trapezoid. If I mark this one parallel also, and I use a different mark to show that those two sides are congruent, now I have an isosceles, isosceles trapezoid. So that's a trapezoid with two congruent sides. This one, I'll make these sides parallel. And those two sides are not congruent, but I will include a right angle. This one is called a right trapezoid. Okay, now, next quadrilateral, we will go into a kite. A kite is a quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of consecutive congruent sides. Notice that I have to have distinct pairs, so that's the different consecutive next to adjacent congruent sides. So let's mark these as kites. This side congruent to this side, consecutive. This side congruent to this side. That's not a kite because I have to be distinct. So I'm going to mark this with two mark. I could also put, of course, numbers. That makes a kite. And then I have this picture here. If I mark these sides congruent and these two consecutive sides congruent, that actually is known as a kite too. It follows the definition. It's got a special name. It's called a dart. And a dart is nothing more than a concave kite. Fantastic. Moving on. The next quadrilateral is a parallelogram, and that is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. All right, let's mark them as such, parallel, and then parallel. This one, some uh, people would might call it a diamond, may call it a rhombus, uh, uh, right now, it's nothing, right? But we need to mark it up. I Diamond is an adjective. Diamond is what you put on a wedding ring. Diamond is, it describes a shape. We are going to call this a parallelogram, okay? Because we're going to mark it as such. Parallel, parallel, done. That's all I need to mark for a parallelogram. Notice I didn't say anything, there are no markings for the length or the angle measures, nothing. All we need to mark for parallelograms is two pairs of parallel sides. Now, some shapes that you've known for a long, long time, but different words. I have a rhombus and a rectangle. A rhombus is an equilateral quadrilateral. And that would look like, well, it might look like what you were called at kindergarten, a diamond. But I'm going to mark it equilateral. And from the last video, we know equilateral means that all sides are the same. So we're going to mark that. And there's my rhombus. Equilateral quadrilateral. Four sides, all sides the same. A rectangle is an equiangular quadrilateral. So... We have an quadrilateral, and all the angles 
match. Now, we know something about rectangles. I'm not going to make you forget that you know that all those angles happen to be right angles. We will show that that's true. So you can mark them like that. That's all we need to do for marking a rectangle. And then finally, a square. I've got three definitions, two word definitions, for a square. And hopefully this makes it all so, so much easier for you. It's an equiangular rhombus or an equilateral rectangle or a regular quadrilateral. An equiangular. So we have, and we need to make it mark marks on our shape. They all look the same. If it's a rhombus, all the sides must be the same. If it's equiangular, we mark all the angles the same. Square. If it's a rectangle, we can mark all the angles the same. And then we, we make it equilateral, that marks all the, same, the sides the same. I'll put it different. And then regular means, well, all the sides match and all the angles match, which I have right here. Now for the circle vocabulary. First off, let's define what a circle is. A circle is the set of all coplanar points a given distance from a given point. Notice that we use that word coplanar, we keep it in a plane. If we take out that word, we would make a sphere. So that would be the same definition, but uh, makes for a sphere. Okay. Uh, given distance, that given distance from a given point, that given distance is also known as a radius. The given point is known as the center. I have drawn a circle here. C is the center. D is on the circle. We can mark this, we could call this circle C. We can use symbols for that, and that would be uh, circle C. Those mean the same thing. And one thing I want to point out is when I see D, that line segment, that is also the radius. Um, and CD is, the radius can be talking about a segment or it could be talking about a number. So it could be a radius of two inches, it could be uh, radius CD. Um, one thing is that the radius is known, is, is that line segment from the center to a point on the circumference. Now notice I'll say on the circumference. When I say on the circumference, what am I talking about? I'm not, I'm not talking about the circumference that you know the formula for. You know a formula for circumference, and that's, that's, that's when it's talking about the perimeter. And perimeter is, uh, well, well, once again, I'm not going to, perimeter of a circle. I'm not going to ask you to forget what you know what, it, what that is. But it also means that the actual circle drawing that I'm making, that's called the circumference of the circle. All right. Now, I can move into some other parts. I can make a line segment that connects two points on the circumference. That's called a chord. A, chord, a line segment with two points on the circle. A diameter is a chord which passes through the center. So a chord is a, excuse me, a diameter is a special chord. Our next word is tangent. And I have a figure here and a statement. Line L1 is tangent to circle G. A couple things that, I, that I'm pointing out. Circle G, I'm telling you the center. I'm telling you L1 is tangent, which means that it intersects at one point. It doesn't go through the circles, and it, but it does hit the circumference at one point. And that's exactly what, what tangent means. A line which intersects a circle at exactly one point. The point of intersection is called the point of tangency. So there you go. Uh, the next 
couple of words deal with part of the circumference. And here we go. An arc are two points on a circle and the continuous part of the circumference between the two points. And then we have, so, well, I, I made a picture and I have three points on the circumference and we can say arc J, K, and that's in English, which is the same thing as J, K, those are the endpoints, and you put a curved arc over the top of it. Now, and you may wonder, well, am I talking about the orange part or am I talking about the blue part? I'm always talking about the shortest arc, not going around the long way, okay? If I want to go around the long way, if I, if I want the blue part, I have to use three points, and that would be arc J, A, K, and I would mark that as such. Start at J, go through A, and end at K, a little bit larger. All right? So, then we have some specific arcs. We have a semicircle, which is half a circle, and that's an arc with endpoints which form a diameter, such as this, this picture here. We have minor arcs that are, excuse me, major arc, which is an arc greater than a semicircle, and a minor arc, which is less than a semicircle. And so arc JK appears to be less than a semicircle, so that would be a minor arc, and JAK appears to be a major arc. Now, another thing associated with arcs is a central angle. And a central angle is an angle with a vertex at the center and whose sides are radii intersecting the circle in two distinct points. So I have a circle. I'm going to make two radii. One, two, and I make a central angle right there. Let's call this our, our arc, excuse me, circle C, and there is my central angle. So angle ACB is a central angle. And I can measure angles just like before. I'll say that that looks like 62 degrees. And strangely enough, the angle formed by those two radii also matches the measure of the arc. Doesn't Actually, it's not that strange, because if I were to continue this on and make a diameter, you already know that this arc, this semicircle, has a measure of 180 degrees, right? And so that's a straight angle, angle BCD, it is also a central angle. The measure of angle BCD is 180 degrees. Also, the measure of arc BD, like that, is 180 degrees. The measure of angle ACB is equal to 62 degrees, which equals the measure of arc AB. So I've showed you a couple things, how that a central angle, how it's formed, how we measure it, and how we denote it symbolically. Remember, measures are numbers, and without the M, we're talking about the shape itself. Now, on to some words that you may not have heard before. The word inscribed and circumscribed. Inscribed is enclosed by another geometric shape or solid. Circumscribed is to enclose another geometric shape or solid. Very close, very similar kind of definitions. So let's look at a couple of diagrams. In here, I have a triangle and a circle. Notice that the triangle hits three points on the circumference, and we're gonna say the triangle is inscribed in a circle. Likewise, I could say it the other way, saying a circle 
is circumscribed about a triangle. So the circle goes around the triangle. Both of these sentences describe this shape. If I make a polygon around a circle, the circle is inscribed in a uh, pentagon, or the pentagon is circumscribed about the circle. The difference here is that we don't hit the vertices anymore. We're going to come, we're going to make every edge is tangent to the circle. All right, I hope that's not too bad. And finally, your last word for today is concentric circles. And that's nothing more than like a target. Uh, circles which share a center. I know it's a lot of definitions, but we'll be done with definitions and real math is coming soon.